My latest book is How to Woo a Reluctant Lady, um, and it's about a heroine whose grandmother has laid down an ultimatum that all the all her and her siblings have to marry before the end of the year or be cut out of the they'll never inherit. And they all have to. It can't be this one doesn't marry so they don't get money and this one does and they get money. No. They all have to do it. She knew that she'd never get any of them to cooperate unless it was going to hurt their siblings. So that's why she set it up that way. And um, so the heroine has decided she's going to pick the worst rogue to date. And then Gran will go, well, you know, then, then she has to marry that guy. And I don't know if that's, you know, and then she'll balk. And of course that doesn't work. So, um, so Minerva is one of these characters who just sprang off the page in the very first book and sprang off the page in every book she's been in. And so readers kept saying, I'm waiting for Minerva's book. I can't wait till Minerva's book. So she was a hoot to write. And because, and I recognized it early on, she's me. She is as close to me. She's a writer. She's a gothic. She writes gothic novels and she's as close to me as you can get. And and I don't put myself in many books. Well, I put a certain amount of myself, we all do, but um, this one was really me. So I knew that anybody who didn't like the book, I was gonna take it personally, but there's nothing I could do about that. But um, I, I, I did really enjoy writing her. And then her brother's book comes out in, at the end of November, they're actually gonna do, uh, Gabe, Gabe and Celia are the final two siblings. And Gabe's book comes out the, towards the end of uh, November, and Celia's book comes out uh, towards the end of January. They wanted to do a back-to-back. -back. It, it, it's not a month apart like most back-to-backs. It's two months apart. But because it's the final, there's also throughout the series, there's the theme of their parents' deaths and how, and what happened, how their parents died. Um, that is resolved in the last book. So I wanted the last two where a lot of the clues come in to be together. So. I enjoy uh, the internet a lot because it, it allows me to interact with readers and um, I have a website. I, I, th I think I keep it pretty updated. We update it once a month. We try to keep it fresh and new, but these days people are moving more to Facebook, so I have a very active Facebook reader page and uh, we're, we're getting ready to start a once uh, every Monday contest giveaway. I'm gonna give away a book every Monday. And so we, we do some things like that. Um, there are discussion you know, boards uh, if they wanna discuss the characters in the books and that sort of thing. And I do polls on my website. I don't do Twitter. <laughs> I, just, I just can't manage the Twitter, but maybe one day, I don't know. Uh, but I do uh, Facebook and, and um, I'm also a member of a group that blogs together called The Goddess Blogs. And there are 10 of us, we're all best-selling authors, and we blog daily. And we have, we've got a group of women who, for, the, for them, that's home and they come and uh, we try to have a party once a year at, at the Romance Writers Convention. and. It, so we, we have a lovely time. I've gotten very close to those women. They're like sisters to me, so we, we really enjoy ourselves. So that's three different ways you can find me. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and I'm going to show my ignorance here. The, the initial H-E-A. Oh, happily ever after. Oh, thank you. How important is it to you to have an H-E-A in your story? Uh, I think every romance novel needs a happily ever after, which is, uh, they sometimes call it H-E-A, uh, because uh, we're writing comedy in the, almost in the Aristotelian sense, which is um, order restored, order taken apart, and, and it, it might have a, tra a tragic theme or it might have a, but at the end of the comedy, Everyone is matched up with their person and order is restored in society and it's a happy ending. We got into the 19th century, you have to forbid, give me, I'm an academic, but in the 19th century we got into naturalism and everything had to be true to life. And so Aristotelian ideas where you had, you know, the happy ending, the tragedy, that sort of format became passe in literary circles, but it wasn't passe for readers. They still like tragedies and comedies. They like Oprah books. 
and they where it ends and you know and the literary uh, readers will say oh it's got to be like real life well if you're reading for entertainment I think you read either for catharsis which is the tragedy or you read for for that joy that comes out of the comedy and I personally believe that romance novels are in this Aristotelian sense comedy they can be dark they can be they can have dark elements but they have a happy ending because they give you that order restored feeling I think that's a basic in human uh, need we need that kind of story and I get very angry when people who are academics start talking about well you know it's because it's got a formula it's like yeah like Aristotle had a formula uh, as far as I know they're still teaching Aristotle you know yeah there was a formula there too because that is that was the structure it's not a formula it's a structure and it's a very important one I think for us as readers, and it just so happens that romance readers like the comedic structure. That's what we like. That's my theory.